Looks like we've got a quiz. As always, when we do our quizzes, I like to simply read the question out loud, then pause for a moment, give you a chance to pause the video, try to answer the question yourself so that you can check for your own understanding. Being able to check in every now and again and see if you understand the material on your own or if you need a little bit more support is an incredibly, incredibly important part of education, both as a teacher and as a student. So very strongly encourage your students to check in on themselves every once in a while, try out a few problems on their own, and make sure that what they think they're understanding is the actual truth, is what they're actually supposed to be doing. So let's get this quiz started. Five questions. I doubt it'll take us five to 10 minutes. What number could replace K below? We've got one over 10 equals 10 over K. K would be 100. Move the dot to graph 9 twelfths on the number line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine twelfths right there. Move the dot to graph the fraction equivalent to nine twelfths on the number line. Well, that looks like one, two, three fourths right there, which means that nine twelfths equals three fourths. Trying it, there we go. Which pair of triangles have equivalent areas shaded? Well, it has to be the second one because although all of these triangles are cut into thirds, notice how the triangle on the right is a bit bigger than the triangle on the left, which means that each third of the bigger triangle is actually gonna be larger than each third of the smaller triangle. This is another important thing. Fractions are proportions. They are a, later on we will call them scalars or factors. They split something existing into equal chunks, but if the thing exists, if the thing was already bigger to begin with, then each of those equal chunks will still be bigger than equal chunks of a smaller object. And that's a really important lesson to, to really, you know, to really get into students' heads. It's like half a pizza is not the same thing as half a cookie. Yeah? So B is the correct answer. List the first five multiples of the denominator for each fraction in order of least to greatest. What is the least common denominator between the two fractions? Well, let's see, that's three, six, nine, 12, 15, and then five goes five, 10, 15, that's the 10, there we go, 15, 20, 25, I know what I'm doing, I'm a math teacher, I'm a professional, and then it looks to me like the least common denominator between the two is 15, which makes sense. And by the way, really fast, if you ever need a common denominator, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, but if you ever need a common denominator, you can always just multiply the two denominators together. You're guaranteed to be a common multiple if you just take the two and multiply them together. Doesn't always work, but it can really help cut, in, or, uh, cut off some of the uh, calculation time when searching for the least common denominator. Anyway, least common denominator, 15. Use the number line to help you complete the equation. Three over two equals blank over four. One, two, three, four, five, six over four. And that's quiz one. We are moving right along. 